Okay, in this video, we're going to discuss autosomal recessive inheritance. This is the genetics pattern uncovered by Gregor Mendel when he exper experimented with pea plants. However, in this video, we're going to focus on human examples. So let's get started. So you might recognize this picture to be a karyotype. It's a picture of a person's chromosomes. And notice how we have pairs of chromosomes. We have a pair of chromosome number one. We have a pair of chromosome 10. Well, the 23rd chromosome, these are the sex chromosomes. And men have a XY chromosome combination. Women have the XX chromosome combination. Well, the other 22 pairs of chromosomes, these are called autosomes. And this is where the word autosomal in the title comes from. An autosome is a non-sex chromosome, meaning there are no genes that influence gender. The genes that influence gender are found on the sex chromosomes. So an autosomal disorder is a disorder caused by a gene found somewhere in the 22 autosomes. For instance, for instance, sickle cell disease is caused by a gene found on chromosome number 11. So in this, in this picture, you can see nicely, I think, how sickle cell disease can actually affect the person. On the left, here we have uh, a vein that branches off left and right and normal shaped red blood cells able to freely roll and travel through these veins and carry oxygen throughout the body. But on the right, notice the sickle shaped red blood cells. They're kind of shaped like bananas. This causes the, the red blood cells to be unable to roll as efficiently. They carry less oxygen. They're more likely to get stuck and clogged in all the twists and turns and the branching of your veins and arteries. So people with sickle cell tend to suffer from poor blood circulation. Another example of an autosomal disorder is cystic fibrosis. The gene responsible for cystic fibrosis has been located on chromosome number seven. And so this is, cystic fibrosis is caused because of a misshapen protein. You might remember that proteins are made from smaller building blocks called amino acids. Now the normal cystic fibrosis protein is made from 1,480 amino acids all chained together. And I've highlighted amino acid 508 for a reason in just a moment. And so if the cystic fibrosis protein is made properly, all these 1,480 amino acids will be attracted to one another and they twist and fold and bend into a three-dimensional protein. But people who suffer from cystic fibrosis, they are lacking, they are missing that 508th amino acid. So that one little deletion of that one amino acid out of the chain of 1,480 causes the cystic fibrosis protein to be altered in, in its shape. It's not shaped and formed properly. As a result, people who suffer from cystic fibrosis tend to have mucus and fluid build up in the pancreas and in the lungs and can lead to some very serious health uh, side effects. And one more example of an autosomal disorder would be PKU or phenylketonuria. The gene for PKU has been located on chromosome number 12. PKU is an amino acid problem. So in our body, there's an amino acid called phenylalanine, and normally that phenylalanine gets converted into tyrosine, and then tyrosine bonds with a bunch of other amino acids to make a protein called melanin. People with PKU, however, lack the enzyme needed to change phenylalanine into tyrosine. As a result, phenylalanine builds up and builds up and builds up in their, in their blood. And as a result, the body tries to get rid of all this extra phenylalanine and some toxins are produced that can interfere with brain development. And so here's a child being PKU tested very early after birth. It's a blood test and the blood will be sent to a lab and, and, tested, and tested for this elevated amount of phenylalanine and then treatment can begin. And so the rule for autosomal recessive inheritance is that sufferers must inherit two copies of the defected gene, two alleles for the recessive disorder in order to be affected. That means, if I put a key up here in my animation here, that means healthy is dominant and 
the disorder, whatever the disorder is, whether it's sickle cell or cystic fibrosis or PKU, would be recessive. And we use lowercase letters to illustrate recessive alleles, and we use capital letters to illustrate dominant alleles. Now here's our woman in this picture here. Now there are three gene genotype combinations that everyone might be. Option one, she might have two dominant healthy alleles. And remember, if we're looking at PKU, this disorder was found on chromosome 12. So maybe on the left chromosome 12, she has a dominant healthy allele. And on the right chromosome 12, she has a dominant healthy allele. This woman would be homozygous dominant and she'd be healthy. But a second genotype option, she could be heterozygous, meaning on one of her chromosome 12s, she could have inherited a dominant healthy allele. And on the other chromosome 12 might be the defected PKU, uh, PKU gene. But because she has the dominant healthy allele, this woman would be healthy. And then there's the third option. Maybe she actually has the disease. The third genotype option here would be homozygous recessive. Maybe on each chromosome 12, she has the recessive PKU gene. You know, the same is true for men. If we look at PKU as our example, there are three possible genotypes that this man can be. On his chromosome 12, he might have a dominant healthy allele on the left chromosome 12 and a dominant healthy allele on the right chromosome 12. This man also could be heterozygous, where on one of his chromosome 12s he has the dominant allele, and on the other chromosome 12 he has the recessive allele. And the third option is he could suffer from the disorder PKU, where on both chromosome 12s, he carries with him the recessive PKU gene. And so if we look at this, uh, this man and woman, maybe this man and woman just recently gave birth to this little girl here. And so let's just pretend that the mom and dad are tested and they are known to be heterozygous. Uh, this means they are healthy, but they have the recessive allele on one of their chromosome 12s. Well, let's set up the genotype of the parents on the outside of our Punnett square. And now we complete the inside of the Punnett square. And in this top left Punnett square, if the capital H, capital H, homozygous dominant comb genotype combination uh, is, is given birth to, then this child would be healthy. Now in the top right of the Punnett square, there is a possibility that capital H, lowercase h, this is called the heterozygous combination. The, the child would be born a healthy, although we would call the child a carrier because the child carries with them the recessive allele and they could pass it on to their future children later on in life. In the lower left-hand corner, we have another heterozygous combination. This also would, give, uh, would, would result in a healthy carrier. And in the lower right of the Punnett square, we see two recessive alleles. This is the only way that a person could inherit an autosomal recessive disorder. Look at the rule. Sufferers must inherit two alleles in order to have the disease. So in this probability example, we can see there's only a 25% chance that that little girl would be born with PKU or cystic fibrosis or sickle cell or whatever autosomal recessive disorder you might be studying. Okay, so here's a practice problem I want you guys to try to solve. Pause the video, read through the story, answer the five questions. I'm going to start going over the answers in three, two, one. So the story says Maria is a heterozygous healthy female. So question number one, what's her genotype? Well, if she's heterozygous, she has one capital H and one lowercase h. So I can go ahead and put Maria onto my Punnett square. And then question number two, what is Jeff's genotype? Well, the story says he suffers from cystic fibrosis. That means he must be homozygous recessive. So I can now add Jeff to the Punnett square. So now that both parents, their genotypes are known, I can go ahead and fill in the Punnett squares. And now once the Punnett squares are completed, I can move on to question number three. What is the probability Maria and Jeff will have a healthy child? Of the four Punnett squares, you can see two of them have a capital H in them. That means there is a two out of four chance, or a 50% chance, that their children will be born healthy. Question number four. 
What is the probability Maria and Jeff will have a homozygous dominant child? Unfortunately, there is a 0% chance. Capital H, capital H does not exist in this example. And then question number five, what's the probability Maria and Jeff have a child born to this life-threatening disorder? You can see that they have a 50% chance of every child that they have being born with cystic fibrosis. So there you have autosomal recessive inheritance. You know, pause the video, try to answer these questions. If you're in my biology class, you know, I'd be happy to check your answers before school or after school one day. And if you're watching at home, I'd love to hear your, your comments in the box below. Thanks for watching.